Hello everybody! In today's video, we're going to do a random game tier list. Yay! This is going to be purely my opinion, okay? So please don't get mad if a game you love is in a lower category. The way I rate games is very different from everyone else. And how I perceive and enjoy these games are very different. How I'm going to be tier listing the games is quite simple. So basically, the more the game can keep me engrossed in the game, the better the game is. And of course, there's also other factors such as do I enjoy the game from the get-go or do I have to play the game more and to the point that I have to get invested. Those games where I have to play more to get invested usually will be weighted lower because to me, a better game is the one that immediately I'm into it and it makes me play for a very, very long time. And also, when it comes to any tier list, there is one problem with them, especially with such a general idea like these is that there's so many games I have not played all of them or played them enough to be able to rate them accurately so that's one thing that I'm going to have to <laughs> try to figure out because you see I'm more likely to dislike a game the more I've played it actually that's my problem so you have the problem of just getting into game and it's fun but then when you get into later stages you start to realize the flaws a game have because when it comes to games and many things in general you only understand the full experience when you get to the deeper end and that's where you can give the most Creating, but the problem is that I don't have time to sink 20 hours into every single game I ever played and sometimes you only start realizing the issues only 40 or 50 hours into a game. I guess it's also the problem with game journalism right now in general because game journalists don't play through the entire game so that honestly their ratings are just not accurate because they don't play through the entire game. Imagine only reviewing a movie just watching the first 20 minutes of it that's basically <laughs> game reviewing nowadays. I'm not gonna use the online tier list websites I'm just gonna make my own. Here's another problem with reviewing and tier listing running games is that all rhythm games are really fun so that's a problem you know okay you know the way I'm going to be judging this list is really really strict compared to every other list like usually when I review games and play them on my videos I'm usually quite lenient and nice about them because to me I can see how fundamentally it will be fun for other people but on my personal list the, the grading system is so so strict because like there will be good games in C tier that's how bad it is <laughs> oh man I feel like the subtext is so huge can you guys read it I think no, everything is not S tier. I mean, although I believe all rhythm games are fun to an extent. Uh, it just depends on how fun. Uh, fun to start. Addicting to keep playing. But honestly, a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, this is A tier for me. Takes investment before the game gets fun. And I don't play enough of it. <laughs> Doesn't do much to keep uh, me hooked. Uh, long term. This is B tier. You can see that, that each tier starts getting more and more strict. Uh, hard to get into for myself and I couldn't bring myself to enjoy it for very long or keep playing. That's C tier and then we have D tier. Oh no, 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 no. This description is perfect for D tier. C tier is like it's still fun. Okay, C tier will be like it's initially really fun but I just couldn't keep playing for more. Yeah, I think I think that's a really good way to put it. Then if you have E tier, I didn't like the game mechanically. And I really couldn't bother to even try. <laughs> okay, then we have here, this is unranked, so question mark. I haven't played enough or played the game before. Okay, let's start with the obvious one. Alright, let's go. Taiko is going in S. <laughs> Okay, now we got that out of the way, let's go. Project Diva, okay. Project Diva is the Vocaloid game where you press buttons on your controller, like the circle, X, square, and triangle to the Vocaloid singing. The way they chart is not to the instruments of the song. Most rhythm games chart things to the instrument or, you know, the beat of the song. But Project Diva is where the chart is charted to the vocals. When most people think of a rhythm game and think of charting for the very first time, they tend to actually map or chart things to the vocals. And in a sense, Pretty Diva is very intuitive when you are someone who goes into a game or a song and the first thing you think of is that when you're pressing the buttons, you're pressing it to the singer singing. And that's what makes Pretty Diva a very intuitive game, like in my opinion. But to be honest, gameplay-wise, the reading in the game is very different from everything else. I found it very difficult to get myself playing the game properly. But this is the arcade game specifically. Specifically, if I'm going to talk about Project Diva with oh a God. controller, like a gamepad, I will not be able to rank it because I have never actually played Project Diva with a controller properly. Lyric rhythm mapping has a much lower skill ceiling, I think. It depends because when it comes to Project Diva, a lot of songs where, you know, the vocalists rap when they sing, I swear. Friday Night Funkin'. <sighs> 
people are gonna be so mad at me. <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of people who are mad at, at me putting Friday Night Funky in a very low spot. Um, I'm sorry. Just remember, this is my opinion. <laughs> just because I don't like a game doesn't mean you, you can't enjoy it, okay? <laughs> but it's just that when you've played many random games, your standards become quite high. <laughs> yeah, I just don't. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I would if okay. I don't have a tier between D and E because mechanically, Friday Night Funkin' is just four keys. It's a tried and tested gameplay mechanic, so um, it would be in D. Right now, I'm really hard pressed on putting the game in E because of the wonky inputs. If we were going to talk about the mods. I would put it in D, maybe, or even the really good ones in C. A lot of the focus of Friday Night Funkin' and the enjoyment I got out of Friday Night Funkin' had anything but the written aspect. I already explained that in my own video on Friday Night Funkin'. It's not that it's a bad game for being an E. It's just that compared to other games that I've played, I would very much prefer to play them instead. <laughs> Alright, so Lanota. It's a mobile game that you have to have a tablet to play. You can play it on a phone, but everything is really small. It's this game where the play field is specifically a circle. You have to tap and drag. It's your typical 4K, except that there is no set number of keys on the screen. And because the entire playfield is a circle, it spins, it moves, and it has very cool gimmicks and stuff. Lanota was so interesting for me to get into. I had so much fun playing the game. The first hour of Lanota was the most gruesome and painful hours I've ever experienced. <laughs> it was so boring. <laughs> okay, so honestly, B. Yeah, Lanota will be in B. The very first hour of the game is too easy. This is quite normal with a lot of mobile running games. Because usually when you create a mobile running game with a very very different and wacky concept to it. The charters don't actually know what they're doing, so they're still trying to feel around the charting. They can't create very difficult things because they're still testing the waters. And this is the first four chapters of Lanota for me. You cannot play Master unless you've already cleared Ultra. So you play through the entire game on just Ultra and it's just not very fun until you reach the boss stages. I really like Lanota mechanically, but the problem is that I never actually played the game for very long. Like I couldn't get myself to long-term play the game like I did for Okay, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Cytus. Alright, so honestly, D. <laughs> Cytus too. Oh, wait. Shh. I can't put it in C because I did not enjoy Cytus. Like, the whole reason why I play Cytus is like, whoa, it circles on your phone. Like, Osu, you know, it's really dumb. That wasn't the only thing that was going through my head as a 16 year old when I played Cytus. I just mechanically do not like Cytus. Cytus is a game where you tap circles to a line going up and down on the screen, and you slide, and you hold, and you tap. The reason why I don't like Cytus is because of the fact that it uses a line that goes up and down. It makes charts flow a certain way and the game feel a certain way. It just did not feel fun when I play Cytus. So it's just not a fan. I know that most likely if I did actually play Cytus, it would go into B because I know this game takes an investment for it to get fun. But even on the harder stuff on Cytus, I just, the way it moves up and down like that, I did enjoy it. <laughs> that is the case for Cytus 1 as well. And by the way, I did play Cytus 1 a lot back then. I made it master the entire first chapter. Then I looked at the later chapters and I was like, I don't really want to play this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really want to play this actually. The enjoyment just fizzled out even though I sunk hours into Cytus. I know a lot of people out there enjoy Cytus. I don't blame them for having the whole line up and down thing. The whole reason why they added the line is so that it will be intuitive. Because you need to understand that when you have a game where you tap things on screen, think of Osuba on touch screen, your hand is going to block things. So how Cytus circumvented this was have a line that's constantly going up and down. So you can always have a rough idea where the next circle or note is going to be. That Cytus for you is actually a really 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 smart thing mechanically and I respect the game for that. It's really really smart. What should we rate next? Rhythm Doctor. Alright, Rhythm Doctor. Ooh, that was a good game. <laughs> I loved playing this. Good stuff. It was so, such a different game mechanically. It's very creative, very heavily based on Rhythm Heaven, but it took it at an extra spin. The, all the beats and the musical parts, like a drummer inside the game itself, is just, it was brilliant. It's so, so smart. Okay, so honestly, as much as I love and sing praises of the game, see, <laughs> because there's not much content of the game. Because the thing about Rhythm Doctor is that it's a standalone single game. It's not the kind of game that you can keep playing for very long, basically. A game that someone would be hooked onto for a month uh, at max with the custom content and things like that. Long-term players, it's a bit hard to find unless the modding scene just keeps thriving. It's a short game after all. They still can add more content. Also Catch. Oh my god. Okay, you know guys, I recently started playing Catch the Beat. <laughs> so Catch the Beat is the least popular mode on Osu. It's the mode where you move a catcher left and right with your arrow keys and make him dash with shift. I will be making a video on Catch the Beat someday. 
just D tier, honestly. <laughs> but I'm still going to force myself to play Cash Beat because I want to feel the game enough so that I can understand how I truly feel about it. But right now, I'm playing things like salads and platters. I have to force myself to play Cash to Beat. <laughs> and that's not a very good look for the game if I have to force myself to enjoy it. <laughs> I wanted to play Cash to Beat, understand the game because it's such a different game mode compared to so many rhythm games out there because instead of pressing your keys to the beat, you move a catcher to the beat. That's really different. So I want to play to the point that I can grasp and explain this weird feeling Catch the Beat gives. It's possible that I just do not enjoy this kind of gameplay, but I want to know. And so many people out there, time and time again, people will be arguing whether Catch the Beat is a running game. So I want to try it myself and find the answer for myself. Okay, so next up, Robies. Okay, let's go Robies. If you're talking about Robies CS, yes, I think I would put it higher. <laughs> So Robits is a rocky rhythm game on Roblox. It's very Robux for me, which is the case for many Roblox games actually, because that's how they make money. Although back then, they didn't let you change the node speed unless you spent money or somehow managed to farm yourself to get an item that let you change the node speed, which is a really dumb thing. <laughs> that's Robits. Although they changed it, now you can change node speed to whatever you want. Honestly, I put it in E. <laughs> No, in between B and E. I don't think I can put things in between, right? I think I'll put in E. The charting in row beats is not very nice. I notice when it comes to row beats, is it me or does the spammy parts of Dark Sheep really, it really reminds me of those Guitar Hero charts. That's what row beats charting looks like to me. It looks like Guitar Hero charts, except you're supposed to do them with your finger. <laughs> okay, so disclaimer, I don't know the highest levels of row beats like the back of my hand. So like, this is not an accurate review. <laughs> I don't know. If I put it in D, right? I'm putting next to Scythus and Scythus too. Can you compare row beats to Scythus inside this too. No, right? <laughs> so, eat this. <laughs> eat this. I'm sorry. Guitar Hero. So, Guitar Hero is going to be the very first game that I'll actually put it under question mark because I do not know Guitar Hero well enough to come up with a proper opinion of it. There's so much going on in Guitar Hero. It's a whole place of its own that's really cool. Just play Gitadora. Okay, so if I were to rate Gitadora, I don't know if you guys know, but Gitadora is where Guitar Hero got their ideas from. Gitadora is a Konami arcade cabinet where they made uh, these guitar and drums, and that's how. Guitar Hero and Rock Band got their idea from. They were heavily influenced by Konami's Guitar Dora, aka Guitar Freaks and Drum Mania. If you're going to talk about Guitar Dora, which I have played, um, honestly, in between B and C, it was really fun for me initially. Except the thing is that it takes a lot of investment to get into the game proper. So I didn't want to go through that investment phase of sinking my time into Guitar Dora. So that's why I end up putting a B tier because you really need a game to convince me to keep playing because I have such a huge selection. <laughs> so a game that can convince me to keep playing is a good game. It means it's really good. But it also could be my own taste because different aspects and different mechanics and different ways a game goes makes different people click. But for me, not really. <laughs> Alright, so the next one. Uh, Dance of Fire and Ice. Very good game. I enjoyed it. To be honest, I prefer it over Ren Doctor. As much as I do prefer Dance of Fire and Ice over Ren Doctor, there's not enough content for me to keep hooked. I know there are the incredible custom stuff on A Dance of Fire and Ice and all that stuff, but there's still a couple of problems I have with the game, such as choosing levels. It's really cool at first that you move your, your fire and ice around the map to select songs, but it also keeps the game world quite limited in that sense, because you need to understand that the entire world in the menu for Dance of Fire and Ice is your song select, and it's structured in a way that you don't need many songs for the complete game experience. And I guess that's how they approach Rhythm Doctor as well. So not the kind they will have many things, but on a standalone game, honestly, super high tier. But for me as a Rhythm game that I intend to play for long term, like for years and years, not the highest, you know. Next up, Arkea. <laughs> oh my, okay, Arkea time. Okay, so Arkea is a very special case. I've made a video on Arkea already. Arkea is a three-dimensional rhythm game for mobile and tablets. And I always talk about how great it is. I always encourage people to play it. It is one of the few rhythm games on mobile that has no flick notes. That's really nice. I think I would put it in A. Because the game managed to keep me hooked for a while. And whenever the game does keep me hooked, like reliably, that will be when there's an event on world mode. But otherwise, I actually don't, have not touched Arkea in like a straight up a year. And Arkea was one of the games where the longer and more I played, the bigger the game felt. <laughs> like the game felt like such a pain, yes. Uh, <laughs> you start complaining more about arcs dropping and shit like that as you go on to the game. Or like, you know, you, like, I don't know, my shitty iPad just dropping inputs. Just 
things like that. Demo. Oh my, Demo. Very cute game. Definitely one of the few rhythm games, the story, the lore that I kept up for so much. Demo is another mobile, like tablet, rhythm game. It's very simple, there's only like tap and slide notes. And that's basically the gameplay. It's probably the number one rhythm game I recommend to anyone who isn't into rhythm games as a place to start out because it's just that mechanically easy. And the songs are nice, they have nice piano stuff. Selecting songs are easy, they have a lot of songs, and the story is very sad. The, the story is also very interesting, it, it keeps you invested, you know? And uh, it makes you keep wanting to play the game because you want the tree in the middle of the game to keep growing as the story progresses. It's really cool. I remember waiting for each update back then when I was much younger because I wanted to know what was gonna happen in demo. And, um... Honestly, detail. <laughs> Despite singing praises of the game, I didn't find the gameplay that fun. <laughs> Demo is good because of the story, but I don't, and the songs are bangers. Magnolia is, yeah, it's great. I wasn't that f a huge fan of the gameplay. Also, another thing I didn't really like about game is that like when you tap too early, you just watch the note explode in the distance and that was such an off-putting <laughs> feeling for me. Yeah, I know, like from first glance, so many people are going to be so mad looking at this list because like, what? Demo? Cytus? D tier? Are you serious? D is a fail. No, it's not a fail. I love a lot of rhythm games. Pianista. Alright. Okay, so Pianista is another rhythm game. It's a piano rhythm game. I think you only need two fingers to tap it. I had a lot of fun playing Pianista. I don't know. I find the game really cute. It's so satisfying to play. I don't know. It's one of those comfort casual games. There are no anime goals, no anime tricks, no cartoons. Just dead pianists all over the game. <laughs> There's only like tap hold and slide notes in Pianista. Very simple gameplay. Very aimed at casuals. I know people were saying, you say Pianista is a casual game? Have you seen the heart charts? Yeah, yeah, I have. They don't look that hard. I mean, you have to understand that, like, um, if you look at the harder stuff of certain games, that's the skill ceiling, and Pianista's skill ceiling is just not quite there yet. It's fun. Although I realize that if you want to get and unlock the harder stuff on Pianista, there's so much grinding, and that is not fun. And by grinding, they force you to play really easy stuff, and it, it gets tiring after, like, two hours, guys. Okay, Muse Nash. Alright, Muse Nash, I made another video on it. It is a very cute fun rhythm game. The interface and everything is beautiful. It originally started out as a mobile tablet rhythm game. They eventually ported it to Steam so you can play on PC now. And I honestly very much like recommend people buy the Steam version instead of mobile version unless you want that portability. Yeah, so a lot of people say it's horny Taiko. Honestly, it still plays a bit different from Taiko, not gonna lie. Very, very beginner friendly. Although the free packs at the very start, I noticed that they are quite easy. There's a lot of Chinese songs. A lot of songs that people don't recognize unless you buy the DLCs. And yeah, this is kind of Lewis, that is honestly the game. The gameplay is simple. I think it was your right or left hand. I forgot which one. You hit the ground notes and the air notes. Uh, the ones in the air and the ones in the ground. So you have like keys for those. Very simple game. A lot of games are, I like are simple. And Mustache is one of those simple games. Definitely a game I would recommend people if, if they were like a huge weeaboo and needed like a game to get into that wasn't an idle game. This is a tough one. Because I, I'm not sure whether I should put it in C or D. It's honestly in between that. It's fun. On paper, at least for me. I can see why some people love the game and enjoy it. But I, after playing like five songs, I didn't really feel like playing more. I just did not enjoy it, you know? It, like if you put me stranded in an island and gave me Mustache, I, I'll play the shit out of it. But the fact that I have a choice of so many other games, Mustache just didn't give me much. Yeah. DDR? Oh, honestly, DDR. Okay, I'll just put the A logo even though I know right now we're on gold. Okay, so Dance Dance Revolution, DDR, question mark. I know it sounds crazy that I have not played Dance Dance Revolution before, but it's more so I have not played the game enough to actually form an opinion of it. The only thing that ever went through my mind playing Dance Dance Revolution was, wow, this is tiring. I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> I mean, I know it's fun. I don't haven't played the game enough to actually form a good opinion on it. Especially since it's such a big game with its own culture, its own meta, its own things going on. Groove Coaster. I don't even know how to describe the gameplay of Groove Coaster. We have uh, your character thing going through a line and then when you see dots on a line, you tap a button. And then if you see directional inputs, you move your joystick left and right. There's a button on the top of the joystick, that's what the normal button presses. And that's Groove Coaster for you. It's really hard to explain without- It's so hard! <laughs> I think Groove Coaster is the one really game that I actually cannot describe with just my words. <laughs> okay, so Groove Coaster would be... I'm torn between B and C. 
The Steam version of Groove Coaster is absolute garbage. I heard the Switch version is better, but I'm not sure. So, fun initially, but then... Okay, so it was, yeah, it was fun initially, but I also know that Groove Coaster is the kind that takes investment to super get into. The biggest thing I was not a fan of Groove Coaster was the fact that there are these things called ad-libs. So, think of invisible notes. So, on the line that your Groove Coaster guy is going through, and you're supposed to hit notes, there are some invisible notes. They call this ad-libs. They are notes that follow the tune to the music. So even when you're not tapping anything, you kind of have to just tell yourself and keep tapping to what you think is happening in the music because you might discover a couple of ad-libs. So you might actually hit these invisible notes. The fact that they're invisible and you have to discover them yourselves and they add up to your total score. Like you will not get like a perfect on the song unless you hit all the ad-libs. It's, it's kind of dumb. <laughs> I, I would get with the extra, but I don't think they're an extra. I'm not sure. If I'm wrong, please correct me. I, I I do not know everything about Groove Coaster. I just know that uh, I couldn't get myself into it. The Steam version is a disaster. You have to change your offset on the Steam version to something dumb. When you change the offset, it changes the offset of when the notes come to you. But it doesn't change the offset of the ad libs. The ad libs, by the way, also follow the music. So, so it means that when you hit the ad libs, you might not actually hit them because they are they're now not on time because they're following the wrong offset. It's it's really dumb. <laughs> All right, next up, Trinitum. I don't have an opinion on this actually. I played the game a couple of times. It's so fun, like when you start. But I know that if I played Trinitum more, I will have so many more complaints about it, and I'm just not qualified to give an opinion right now because I haven't played it enough to come up with one. I think I'm gonna put Trinitum here because I haven't played it enough. No. Okay, if you guys don't know Trinitum is an arcade game. It's a game where the panel where you input your, your notes and stuff is touch. So it's a touch panel. And then you have these things called... I think they're called air notes. And you have to raise your hand when you see an air note. They have these sensors at the side of the cabinet. They're motion sensors. So when you raise your hand, it will detect that you moved your hand and it will hit the air note. So the game is very much like up and down movements on this cabinet. First impressions, the game looks ridiculously fun. It's a touch panel. I think I didn't like that aspect about Trinidad, but I didn't play it enough to know how I felt about it. Because it's a really weird concept where you're pressing this touch panel in front of you to a screen that is in front of you. I know the screen and the touch panel are aligned, but it's very different from playing things like mobile games where you see where you touch. But for Trinitum, it's not really the case. It becomes more of a muscle memory thing. Although like also in tablets, you know? Okay, Mai Mai. Okay, so Mai Mai is another arcade rhythm game by Sega. Mai Mai is what we call the washing machine rhythm game. You have about, I think, eight buttons around this ring, a circular screen, and you have notes coming out from the middle of the screen to the edges and you have to tap the buttons or touch the screen, touch screen, to the beat. And when you do that, it's, it's a very satisfying game. Touch screen or buttons. And they also have slide notes on the screen and they have hold notes, the typical holds. But the slides can get really crazy to look at. This basically Mai Mai boiled down to its essentials. I know one thing about Mai Mai is that I always keep hitting late because I time my hits to not the hit sounds from the game itself, but to the sound of the button makes. But the thing about the buttons is that they're really deep, so the buttons are very delayed compared to the hit sounds from the cabinet. And the offset function in my mind, you can't set it late enough where you can set it to your button presses, so you are kind of forced to listen to the hit sounds, even if you're used to pressing buttons. I'm gonna be real, guys. I don't like my mind. <laughs> I just don't like it. I have never touched the game. No, I've touched the game a few times. <sighs> Uh, yeah, this, this is the actual hot take in this entire tier list thing. Like all these games here, I try to review them as objectively as possible. But in my mind, I have this just personal bias that I just do not like the game. Gameplay itself is probably fun. Straight up, I can't rate the game because I never actually gave the game a chance. Maybe one day I will and I'll be able to rate it according to this list here. But because I just tell myself to never touch the machine. Bang Dream! Can we not rate any of the idol games? I don't play any of them. Here's another take from myself. I don't like idol games. <laughs> It's the same don't like feeling as I have with Mai Mai. Um, I don't know. I just don't like idol games. Okay, I haven't explained what Bang Dream is. Bang Dream is another mobile and tablet like rhythm game. It's uh, I don't even know how to describe the gameplay because I know this a lot of idol games have very, very similar gameplay where you have like, I think five, five lanes and the buttons. But then again, a lot of rhythm games just follow the same lane concept. I haven't played the game enough to know how the charting differs from different idol games because usually you only can tell if a game is very different when you play them enough to know like the complex, difficult charting meta of the game. But I haven't, so that's why Bang Dream is in unrated. And also, there's a lot of things that rhythm gamers generally do not like in idol games. 
and that will be the scoring system. And the scoring system in Bang Dream and a lot of other idol games, they're dependent purely on the girls you have on your team. So Bang Dream and other idol games, they're like half rhythm games and the other half are gacha games. So you gotta roll for good characters that will give you more score. So you could full combo or perfect a song with like the base characters, like the default people. And you will lose out to someone who's doing terribly with like a team full of SR, something like that. The scoring system isn't why I stayed away from Bang Dream. I just did not like idol things in general. So I just stayed away from them. I know the idol games have really good songs. Like they cover so many nice songs and I can see why so many people want to go and play idol games because they have songs that they actually know in and there's nothing wrong with that so you can go and enjoy the game just something inside me just tells myself don't play it don't play it I'm sure everyone will have that kind of feeling towards something in their life like they just have this irrational feeling of don't do it when it comes to trying out a game or like watching a certain thing Beat Mania Alright, Beat Mania is a very interesting case. Beat Mania is another arcade game. It's by Konami. It's probably one of the oldest music arcade games. It might even be the first, actually. It follows like a DJ format where you have like seven buttons and then a turntable on your left or your right. The original Beat Mania, the very first version, the turntable was only on your right. So everyone was essentially a 2P player. But in Beat Mania 2DX, which is the updated version, they added two more buttons. The original Beat Mania only had 5 buttons, the current version today has 7. And the turntable now shifted instead of only to the right, to the left and the right. So if your turntable is on the left, you are a 1P player. If your turntable is on the right, you are a 2P player. And I'm a 2P player because I hate myself. <laughs> Alright, so Beat Mania is one of the OGs and definitely one of the most difficult arcade rhythm games to get into, honestly. Like, if you play Beat Mania 2DX, you are the intellectual of rhythm games. Like, straight up. <laughs> I think on the internet and people who buy these arcade controllers, Beat Mania is the most popular on competing in private servers online. I noticed that Beat Mania usually has the highest number of players. Unlike Sound Vortex. Despite the fact that I think Sound Vortex has more people buying the controller than Beat Mania, so it's, I don't know about the numbers, but this seems to be the case. It's really interesting. Okay, B. Honestly, Beat Mania is B for me. It took a lot before Beat Mania became fun. Like, the game only started becoming fun when I hit level 7s or 8s, which is still in the normal zone for their difficulty rating. They have normal, hyper, and another. Uh, hyper is difficult. Another is another tier. It's quite a pain to learn how to play the game because of the weird layout. You gotta learn your own finger methods. It's really difficult to get into Beat Mania. Uh, the game gets really fun the moment you get into it, but I just couldn't keep myself playing for reasons that are like, ah, uh, <laughs> I have to work so hard at this game. You know, if, if you play Beat Mania and you play a lot, you're kind of like a masochist. Uh, no, actually, let's be real. All, all rhythm games are masochist. <laughs> Sound Voltex. Okay, Sound Voltex, Sound Voltex. The, the arcade game I have played the most. I honestly have put more time into Sound Voltex than Taiko because I started playing Sound Voltex first. This one is a really easy A. Eh? If you guys don't know, Sound Voltex is another arcade game by Konami. It has four BT buttons, which are these white buttons, and then two FX buttons, which are the two long black buttons on the bottom. So it's essentially a six key game. But then they have this really interesting mechanic called the knobs on the left and the right, which you turn to follow these lasers on the screen. It doesn't matter how quickly you turn the knobs, as long as you keep turning the knob in the direction that the laser is going. If you look closely at the bottom, at the laser area, there's this triangle, and you turning the knobs moves that triangle to the laser. So that's how Sound Vortex lasers work. That's Basically all there is to Sound Vortex, the lasers and then holding our buttons or tapping them. It's very mechanically simple if you get the laser idea down and it's so fun to start. Like you straight up will only start to feel pain when you play Sound Vortex only after 30 hours. When you start playing Sound Vortex, you will not stop. And even when you do hit that first wall on Sound Vortex, you don't want to stop. And the only thing that made me feel like stopping was the times when I was playing shit like Freedom Dive. Okay, Freedom Dive on Sound Vortex is not too bad. It's the stuff that's way more technical than that. <laughs> the newer technical charts on Sound Vortex is just like, yo, they're another tier. They're so difficult. Like the game gets really tough and grindy at the end. If you're speaking pure arcade wise, the game costs so much money if you're trying to unlock songs or going for the skill analyzer. It's really expensive. I have personally spent probably a thousand dollars or more on Sound Voltex. Taiko is 
probably at $500 right now. Some Vortex is still the one where I spent the most money on because of the stupid card generator shit. Uh, Sound Vortex has an element to it that's a gacha. You put in money and then you pray that it prints out the character you want. It, I, I hate it. <laughs> so dumb. Alright, next game, next game. Quaver. Oh, I don't really want to rate Quaver, Eterna, and also Mania. Those are like, the gameplay on those games, they are all, they are the basics. And it's really hard to rate. Because on Osu Mania, right? I actually did not like the game quite early in. I wouldn't see. Believe it or not, I hate it when games get too difficult. It's ironic considering that a few of these games here, I complained that they were too easy at the beginning stages. But the problem with Osu Mania is that after about 4 stars, like when I was reaching 4 stars, it felt like the game had too many notes going on. If you listen to the key taps of the, the person tapping to the music, especially on really hard levels, I didn't really like that because all you heard is just you know and I don't know for, for me at least I didn't like just pushing myself so much for for what? I, I like it when songs follow music I'm like a huge conformist and yeah I'm one of those people that don't like dumb charts <laughs> so Quaver is in unranked and then we have Eterna they are all the 4k games I'll put it in unranked honestly just I still haven't managed to bring myself to play Eterna properly that's all and another thing about Eterna that makes it really not beginner friendly is how the, the game looks like and that's actually a legitimate reason why many people turn away from Eterna I know Atian would be really mad at me for saying this and he would absolutely not want to hear it Crossbeats let me take a look at that um you guys are talking about earpiece Spin Rhythm Oh, Spin Rhythm is a tough one. Okay, straight up, it's going in the... <laughs> okay, I've made a video on Spin Rhythm before. Spin Rhythm is this PC game, it's on Steam. This track, you have to turn this red and blue track in the middle to follow and catch like a line up to these coloured notes. So you gotta align blue to the blue notes and red to the red notes. It's a mix of tapping and pressing space for the green lines. And that was Spin Rhythm. I remember only playing it in the very early stages where the gameplay was really different. I've been getting comments on my Spin Rhythm video that the game is different now in controls and it's more fun to play and that the game has changed a lot. So if I was talking about when I first played Spin Rhythm on the video years ago, D. But right now, since the people say that they've changed how the game works, I'm gonna put it in not sure. <laughs> yeah, Spin Rhythm is the kind of game that they put in too much gimmick. Rhythm games is great for it to be simple, but when it's too simple, it gets plain. Like, you know, the typical just only four lanes. That gets boring. So keeping things fun will be adding gimmick to it, like RKS arcs. And Muse Dash is split lanes. That is a simple gimmick you can add to make things interesting and different enough to where you can chart unique difficult stuff specifically that only works on the game because otherwise it will not work out and Spin Rhythm is like they took out all the, the, the basic stuff and only put in the gimmicks that's at least what I felt when I first tried the game but now since people say it's different I don't know <laughs> You guys are talking about Crossbeats Revolution. It's a it's a dead game. It's gone. Uh, the only thing I like about Crossbeats is that it has Historia inside and that's, that's the only cool thing I think about it, I guess. Beat Saber. Alright, that's another interesting one. So everyone by now would have most definitely heard of what Beat Saber is. And Beat Saber is a VR rhythm game where you swing your sabers at these blocks and to the beat. And it's genuinely one of the most interesting rhythm games I've ever played. Yes, it is a rhythm game despite the fact that it does not have timing windows. And I feel the fact that they did not add timing windows is the whole reason why it makes the game just work. And they count the angle of your slices instead of if you're hitting to the beat or not. Because it's a VR game, it utilizes the VR space. So it's so unique to VR that you cannot recreate Beat Saber like anywhere else. People try making a PC, people try making a knockoff on mobile. It's just not the same. A tier, honestly, A tier. <laughs> it's so fun. It's, it's so easy to get hooked onto this game. I just don't play it enough. <laughs> Because I get tired <laughs> and I'm so lazy to play Beat Saber. But honestly, it's so fun. It's not that it doesn't have enough content to keep me invested. It's just, I'm so lazy, guys. <laughs> Figros. Is it Figros or Figros? Figros, right? People call it Figros. Alright, so Figros, Figros. So Figros is another rhythm game that is for mobile and tablets. It works really interestingly. I touched on the game very briefly in my top 10 like mobile rhythm games video. The whole gimmick of Figros is that the game's judgment line moves. So you can have really crazy wacky gimmicks going on. Uh, the game has the usual tap notes, hold notes, slide notes, and flick notes. 
But the only thing that keeps it super interesting is the fact that the line that you're tapping on moves. So you have a lot of crazy glitches going on in the game that like, they can do, uh, like glitching and song stuff. So I don't know. I know that it's a really fun game that a lot of people will enjoy. But personally, it couldn't hook me in for very long. Like I played it a couple of times. Uh, I thought like, hey, that's fun. And then I didn't really feel inclined to play another song. I would play a few songs of it and then I'll be like, I want to play Dance Real 3. <laughs> Speaking of which, let's, let's rate Dance Real 3. Dance Real 3 is so underrated, guys. It's another mobile running game. But something about the charting in this game is so unique and it's so satisfying to play Dance Real 3. So Dance Real 3, it has the typical tap notes. Yes, it has flick notes. Yes, it has slide notes. But the way it works, it very much feels like it's following through them. And like the game gets so hard, but all the charts are so fun. 10 out of 10 underrated. It's just a bit hard to unlock some songs at the beginning, but that's it. It's still so fun. It's 100% I recommend. Please play Dance Real 3. Like whenever I boot up my iPad right now, the only game I actually open is Dance Real 3. Like not even RK. Yeah. <laughs> is it a Dance Real 3 or I open up like a Taiko Simulator for my iPad? <laughs> I would put it in A. Would I? I think I might actually, Dance Zero 3. It's fun. But I know that like eventually I would get bored of this game and put it into a B, B tier. Still haven't played it enough to know whether it's good or not. So maybe I should put it in like, I don't know, question mark. <laughs> like I like it, but I also don't know if I know enough about it, honestly. So okay, I'll put it in like question mark. <laughs> like I played it like for a couple hours and those couple hours were so fun. I just have not charged my iPad so I can't play the game. <laughs> okay, Waka, Waka. So Waka is another arcade rhythm game. This one is uh, independent. It's not by Konami. It's not by Sega. It's not by it's not by Namco. It's by I forgot what their company is called, but they basically took all the big artists of the Konami songs and whatever and they created their own game with, with all their bangers inside. And the song selection is great. <laughs> okay, so Waka is another game that's circular, like Lanota. Uh, actually, honestly, when I saw Waka, the first thing I thought of was this is basically Lanota. But then now as you look at the actual game, you can see that it, it's not like Lanota at all because of the way they use a the slide mechanic. The, the game has a lot more sliding to the left and right which is something Lanota does not have because Lanota only swipes and flicks up and down, inwards and outwards of the circle. But for Waka, you can slide left and right. So that makes Waka quite different. Playing the game is also very different because some songs where you have to like flip your entire hand all around the arcade cabinet and that's like a very different experience compared to Lanota. I, I think I only played Waka like once, so I, I cannot judge this at all even though knowing how the game works. I remember I didn't want to play Waka for too much because it didn't seem like there was much content at the time. I'm sure they've updated the game a lot since it was first released, but um, I just have gonna bring myself to just play it. Like I said, there's so many games I don't know guys. Tone Spear. Every time I see Tone Spear and I google Tone Spear, I legitimately have no idea how the gameplay looks like. <laughs> Tone Spear looks like such a nice game. It looks like they have such nice songs. So yeah, I've never actually played Tone Spear before. I have the game downloaded, but I still don't know what <laughs> the game is. I have not played the game. I have it downloaded, but I still haven't done it. So yeah, Tone Spear is going to question mark. People were so upset that I didn't include Dynamics in my, my mobile runner games for this video. But the thing is that I have also not played Dynamics enough or at all to even make a video about it or like talk about it or include it in a video. I know the, how the playfield works is that they have lines going at all four sides. I think that's how Dynamic works, but I really do not know much about Dynamics. Right. Right, the last one, Osu. I, I don't know. I don't know, guys. Like none of the descriptions I put in each tier box describes Osu at the moment. You know, what do I do? Um, like Osu is not the game that like I would not play long term. I've played Osu for so long. Of co of course, there's something going on in Osu that keeps people and myself playing for so long. Yes, the game takes investment. And yes, the game is also fun to start. But I also wouldn't put it in S. So I, I don't know. This is this is just I have honestly no idea. This is this is just <laughs> I'm just gonna put Osu in its own category. I don't know. Osu in its own box. Cause I legitimately have no idea how to rate the game. Like I have such a love-hate relationship with the game. I find the game so unengaging right now. <laughs> but I also know that I used to be all over this shit. So it's it's such a mixed feeling, you know? It feels like it was and it still is a part of my life. But I don't know. Alright, and that's it for my tier list. Funny thing, Osu would be the one to stump up. Yes, you think the other games would be difficult, but it's Osu. And this is my final tier list. I know there's more games I haven't added, but if there is more games that I have not added, it means that I have not played them enough to rate them, honestly. I know there's more I haven't pointed out. Feel free to comment the game that I haven't pointed out, and I will try to reply in the comments with my tearing of it. But most of them will go to question mark, because whatever I could rate, I put it in the sides. Nobody is going to stand next to Taiko in S tier. <laughs> 
So I still have my old Twitter data. I remember a long time ago, I made a runner game tier list for Twitter. And that was before I started playing Taiko. So let's see how I rated all the runner games back then. I like how Demo is still in D tier. Okay, wait, so I put Clone Hero <laughs> in D. Why? Okay, I put Juby in C. Freddy Eva in C. Danota is was in B. <laughs> Sound Voltex was in A. Okay, is that, that's consistent. A Rootage was in A. Yeah, Tudex was in A. DDR was in A. Dance Rush was in A. Pump It Up was in A. Yeah, I put Osu in C. And then Arkea is in C. <laughs> because I think at this time I was really mad at how the game worked. Because I kept dropping inputs. And Taiko? Dude, Taiko is an S. <laughs> the funniest part is that I didn't even play Taiko at this point in time. I think I'm gonna end stream now because my dad's playing chanting stuff and I don't want that on the recording. Hope you guys enjoy. I'll show my final tier list on the screen again. Interesting. So, bye-bye.